there is a huge potential because sustainability, whether it is economic, social, or primarily environmental, which is the major task of Tehran. I think it's extremely important that we get these practices embedded in the way we conduct our businesses and in our manufacturing, in providing our services, in, in the way we, we conduct affairs of the state everywhere. Now, if we want to do that, we need to have the tools, we need to have the understanding of how to do it. Now, this is where creating a CEO business forum, having a continuous dialogue, sharing of information, best practices, and this is the kind of platform that this provides. And so that there is a critical mass that it starts slowly becoming the nature of things to us. Uh, to be very clear, that it becomes our dharma, that when we do this, we will always do it in a given way that is environmentally sustainable. Uh, there's also one more feature about it. There are people who may not agree on climate change, there are others who are not. But certainly everybody def definitely agrees on energy, I mean, resource efficiency. How do you make our resources go further? Even if you think they're unlimited, we still need to make sure that there is an efficiency from point of view of cost efficiency, etc. that you need to, you make the liter of gasoline go a lot longer. Why just, by just 60 kilometers? Why not 6,000 kilometers? There are several other such energies that we use or some resources we use, which we need to make extremely efficient with, with sort of destructive technologies. On the other hand, we also look at climate change. Can we really control it? All right, we may not. Then how would we adapt to it? What if the temperatures do rise? It's going to create more earthquakes, it's going to create more floods, it's going to create more. So how do we then create infrastructure that can survive those? Can we paint scenarios of what is the kind of infrastructure, what safety features do we build into it to be able to survive some of those things? So I think adaptability is the other aspect. Now, when you come to BSDC, the whole objective is to make this into a practice that ultimately becomes the dharma of every company and corporate sector, or every institution for that matter, in the way it does things. Whenever there is a new initiative that has to be brought into the, the work method to do things, you need a champion for it. Obviously, the biggest champion has to be the CEO. And some of the top management people have to take the lead in creating that practice. But you still need a champion who will, who will drive the initiative forward, who will be able to go and reach to the far recesses of the organization to convey the message of what is required to be done, to answer questions, to s settle doubts, uh, to set, set standards for practices, to engage with setups like Terry, etc., in order to create the tools. So, so I think the CSO is primarily a, a champion within a corporate sector or an institution whose task it is to promote sustainability as an idea, as a practice. But it has to be the CEO at the top management that must stay extremely committed. Without that, nothing will happen. In the end, even the final worker has to get committed to it, for it to really become a practice. But it is the job of the sustainability officer to champion this cause.